Hi, my name's Aaron, and I'm going to show you how to take apart an ITT trimline phone. This can also be done with a Northern Electric or a Western Electric trimline. This is a pretty straightforward process. I love these trimline sets. They are a feat of engineering. The dials in a telephone are very precise and have to generate a certain number of pulses per minute in order for the dials to be recognized. When they made this phone, they wanted to make it small enough that they could fit the entire dial inside your hand. Now the old dials were pretty big. You'd have to hold the phone out like this. The trim line phones, you see this thumb stop here. It actually moves with the dial until it gets to this point. That allows it to send the correct number of pulses while also maintaining the smaller dial. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the number protector. This one is a little bit broken. All I do with these is I just use a little thumbtack. You can see it popped out the metal plate there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the base. This is gonna reveal all the screws that I'll need to unscrew to get this phone apart. So we'll start with the base. I'm just gonna disconnect my line or my handset cord. Use a standard screwdriver to remove these screws. These are quite tight. I don't know that this phone has ever been opened before. Very easy. One screw, two screws. And it just comes apart just like that. So there's the hook switch. You can see it's just a piece of plastic, nice and easy. Those two screws stay in place. They don't pop out or get lost. And on the inside here, we have the guts of the telephone there. You can see is a single bell. Here's our network. And our hook switch up at the top. As you can see, when the hook switch is depressed, it changes the contacts that are being made right there. And that would take the phone on or off hook. Onto the dial side, the handset. It's really the same thing. We're going to loosen off these two screws. These ones are a little looser. It's likely the handset has been tampered with at some point. Now it was manufactured in May of 18 or 1984. So it stands to reason that in 36 years, somebody might've wanted to know what the inside of it looked like. So very simple, just take out those two. Oh, not quite far enough. One thing you do need to be careful of is there is this button here and uh, that will just pop right out. These ones may need to come all the way out. A little bit further, we'll get there. So yes, these ones will come all the way out. And then this should just come apart nice and easy. This is where it gets really cool. So here's our two white wires that go to the receiver. Our transmitter down here is connected with a black wire there and a red wire here. It's kind of hard to tell. And then we have a bunch of other stuff connected. So this is our dial here. We're going to take that off in a minute. On some of the newer trim line phones, you'll find they actually have all this circuitry in a nice plastic band that goes across the entire length of the phone and is actually attached to the transmitter cup and the receiver cup. This one, they've got it all in one place. So this is an older model. The newer models use uh, smaller pieces. And this screwdriver is just a hair on the big side, so I'm gonna pause this and get a smaller driver. 
and I'm back with an appropriately sized screwdriver. So as we were doing, we're just going to disconnect a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this receiver cap and the wires on it. So that's not the right size either. Let's try this one. And these don't actually need to be unscrewed a whole lot. These are just clips, so they just come right out with just a tiniest amount of turn. Just like that, we've disconnected our transmitter cup. They're not transmitter, sorry, the receiver cap. You'd think I would know the difference. And these screws are in there good and tight. I'm not about to give up. You know, nice crack as they start to move. Again, we're going to have to take one of these screws all the way out in order to get that out. As you can see, it doesn't move a whole lot. And that just comes right out to reveal a nicely wedged transmitter. I'm just going to pop that out. It's a very small trans... Uh, I keep calling it a transmitter. <laughs> Receiver. Very small receiver, dated 484, so the month before the phone was finished. There's also a nice little LED. These light up a little bit. Uh, this one does not appear to have a bulb in it, but these connectors here would connect to a bulb that would light up this front display here. to the back end here. Same as before, we got a couple of wires connected to, this time it really is our transmitter cap. So I'm just gonna unscrew those a teeny bit. Slide that off carefully. Maybe a little more on that one. Those come out easily. And we're gonna, before we do anything else, we're gonna have to take off the circuitry here. So this is one's very easy. It's just a single screw holding it in place. We do take this one off all the way. And here he goes, that should pop right out. Maybe I'm missing something. Well, we'll keep unscrewing things until it pops out, right? Here comes the dial. These screws need to come all the way out. There are three of them here. This dial is also from April 1984. You see the date, 484, right there. All three screws are out. And there's still something holding us back here. Oh, I remember now. So the transmitter cup is held in place by these 
little metal pieces here. There's one there, and there's one, you can't really see it very well, right there. And they're just held in by these two tiny little screws. So we're gonna take care of those, and then that should be the last of it. At that point, everything should just pop right out. don't actually have to come all the way out once you have enough wiggle room the whole thing will just pop right off of the transmitter cap of course I spoke too soon this one doesn't want to come there we go now I can take that right off the whole dial mechanism is going to come off and that light spot there I'm going to leave that in place here's our transmitter the date on this one looks like five, or no, sorry, 384. So this is the earliest component so far that we've come across. Again, there's a little seal there to keep it in place. Uh, so we see the same thing on the receiver side. Uh, it didn't come out when I took the receiver out, but it definitely could have. So there you have it. There's the disassembled phone. Here's that little button I told you was going to fall out. Well, it did. So when we put it back together, we're going to have to be careful about that. The dial itself is uh, very simple. Just these two black wires here holding it in place. With this model, these wires just slide right off. You might find some that are screwed in. So there's not a lot to these dials. Now, I have taken one of these apart before, but that is not a video for today. I will show you this though. You can see the two contacts in there. And as I move the dial, you can't really see it. I'm even better from this angle. No, can't really see it. But there is your dial with the moving thumb stop. You can see the thumb stop moves with the dial until it hits a stopper, which is right there. And now for the fun part, putting it all back together. So the first thing to do is put the dial back in place. That was these three little screws here. And we got to make sure we get them all back in the right places. That's two and three. Just another date code to point out here. There's 484 on the transmitter cap. So I'm going to reattach these two wires here in a moment. First, I'm going to put this guy back in place. Oh, upside down. I always check. Mostly because I always get it wrong the first time. So there we go. We've got a couple of things back together here. Now then. Remember we had these two black wires we pulled off. We're gonna reconnect those. It is important to reconnect them for the dial to work. However, the order is not important. These are simply measuring the pulses and passing them back on to the network. So I'm gonna put my 
transmitter cap it, and my transmitter in first, and then we're gonna put the cap over top of it. So when we put this back in, we're gonna get this metal bar in position. It has to be on top of the transmitter cap. And we're gonna tighten that back in place. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So you see these are engineered very well. They fit exactly precisely in. So this side is down with that little notch and that will push this down into the place where we have our hole. a little easier. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put the screw through the hole first because really, I don't know if you can see it but this whole mechanism is popping out a little bit. Um, I should have shown you earlier but that button there is a switch behind it much like the hook switch it's just a couple of small contacts that get moved when you press the button and that's forcing this whole mechanism out of the telephone. So have to apply a little bit of pressure when we're putting this back in. this piece and just screw that back in. Now this telephone does not require any external power. That light, if it were present, would be powered by the line voltage on the telephone. Next we connect our transmitter back up. Red on the right, black on the left with the foam facing down, of course. And the same thing for our receiver. important thing here is to make sure we get this on in the right orientation. We could put it on like this, but then our wires have to go that much farther. So that puts strain on them. So very important. You get the wires in the right position. The connectors should be closer to the bottom of the phone. So I'm just going to slide that down where the first one is. And I'm going to put the second screw in as well. And then I'm going to tighten them both going back and forth from one to the other. Slightly bigger screwdriver I think will work a little better. One thing I like about older telephones is you only ever need one type of screwdriver. If you're using a Phillips or a Robertson, it is not an original screw. The idea was a bell technician could go out to any house call and he would need the smallest number of tools possible, which in this case is just the screwdrivers and the tiny little thumbtack I use to open up the number plates. So again, very simple. We're just going to reattach the transmitter, sorry, the receiver cap. It's always going to be your white wires. If you open up the handset of a 500 telephone, you'll see the white wires go to the top, the red and the black stay at the bottom. 
pretty standard in the industry. So then once that's done, we're just gonna tuck these guys out of the way so they don't get damaged. And we're gonna put our two pieces back together here. There is a bit of a lip there that has to go underneath and through that hole. So as you can see, I'm just gonna slide it on, click it into place, and then screw it back together. So we just got these two screws left, and this one piece of metal. So this goes across, I think, like this. And this, this is here in place of the light, because that obviously would block the light. So very simple, we're gonna drop our screw in, and we're gonna tighten it up. Of course it doesn't want to go in. Why would it work when I'm making a video, right? No pressure. So it appear my screws just aren't lining up very well. I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure to the top of the phone to keep everything lined up. And just like magic, everything's sliding into place. plate on here and then we're going to put our number plate back on this number plate is dirty and broken I don't have another one or I would swap it out so maybe I'll keep an eye out for a bunch of these new old stocks somewhere but for now very simply we're just going to slide that back into place there's our handset we're going to basically just slide this back together. This one's gonna be easy. We just gotta make sure again, we have these taped off wires here. We don't wanna pinch them or anything like that. So I'll just move them before I tuck it in. And just two screws back together. Put our nice ITT plate back in place. And then plug our cord back in and we are all back together. All done.